Mecca and to its capital city, Astana, for an inaugural Judo Grand Prix. Last year, it was Almaty which hosted the event, but this year, Astana takes centre stage. And it's in this city that next year's World Championships will be held, making this Grand Prix a sneak peek of things to come. Astana has a tough act to follow as World Judo is still reeling from the events inside the Tractor Arena in Chelyabinsk, which witnessed a truly historic World Championships. Now the dust has settled, the IGF's World Tour resumes in full force, with the Sayaka Stadium in Astana playing host to the second Grand Prix since the Worlds. For Kazakh Judo fans, it's a chance to see the sport at its best. Amongst the names on show at the draw were some old favourites as well as some of the very best athletes the world has to offer. It was also a chance to see which domestic fighters would be in with a shout of World Championship glory next year. We start with the women's under 63 kilogram category, where the now former world champion Gerby was in action. After taking her first world title in Rio 2013, Gerby was unable to defend her crown in Chelyabinsk. World number one, Adbeg Nunu, exacted her revenge on the Israeli with a spectacular ifop to seal the deal on an epic final. Gerby was here in Astana looking to put the disappointment behind her. A Grand Prix gold would do just that. And her elimination contest suggested she was up to the challenge as she boasted her usual dynamic array of hip throws en route to the final. Gerby looking good for a perfect comeback. Her opponent in the final would be Sweden's Bernhard, and with Gerby having been guilty of losing focus when it counts over the last year, the Swede knew she would have a chance to take a major scalp here in Astana. Could Gerby hold it together? Can Gerby really started to get back to form? Bernhard. She's really having the competition of her life. She really is. Big arm over! Oh, very close there from Yarden Gerby. Big hits across. Crowd loving this. Yarden Gerby, one of the biggest throwers in ladies' judo. She just looks for the hip on. Now, gripped up. Uchimata! It's all over. Hip on given. Yarden Gerby wins the gold. She was searching for it all the time. And actually, the support foot just on the outside, but she got a bit of rotation from it. And up Burhome went. Look at that. The lift, the rotation, the control of the upper part of the body. Beautiful stuff there from Yarden Gerby. And she is back to her best. She lost the world final. She didn't defend her title. But on this kind of form, she has every chance of regaining it this time next year. Actually, it's my first gold medal in the Grand Prix in all these years, uh, so it was one uh, target I wanted to have, and I got it today, so I'm really happy. I know the Swedish girl, I, I know her for training camp and uh, tournaments, for, so I knew what I can make her for, and I planned it, you know, it's like. Uh, any other program in your mind, you think about it and continue to think about it, and you it's like you play it on your mind how it will be, where you grip, where you move, how she reacts, and it was perfect. Down one weight at under 57 kilograms, it was Hungary's Caracas who took home Grand Prix gold after she faced off against Austria's experienced Fitz Moser in the final. Caracas was able to trap Fitz Moser in a pin and hold her for 15 seconds to score a Wazari, which would ultimately be enough to leave her sitting pretty atop the podium. The win moved her up to number 13 in the world rankings. But at under 70 kilograms, Austria were able to celebrate a goal as Fitz Moser's teammate Graf went one better than a compatriot came out the right side of a scrappy final with Georgia Stout taking the win on penalties. It was left to Germany's Vargas Koch to provide the flair in the category as she snared Brazil's Merle in a quick transitional movement to pick up a submission win via a strangulation technique. Great stuff from Vargas Koch to 
earn her a bronze medal. Up one way to under 78 kilograms, and Germany were in the hunt for a gold, as Maltzak came out to contest the final. Her opponent will be the up-and-coming Powell of Great Britain, who looked determined to make Astana her first Grand Prix gold. Having taken plenty of bronzes in the past, Powell looked ready to step up a notch as she decimated all comers en route to the final here in Kazakhstan. After holding Italy's Gallioni in the semi-final, Powell was ready for her showdown with Malta. Their final would be a real roller coaster ride. The last time they met these two, Maltzan came out the winner. Powell looking for revenge, though. Always looking for it from Powell. Oh, my goodness me, she's gone down. Maltzan goes ahead with the Wazari. Nice combination there. Hit first, then the leg. Oh, so drives her onto her side. Powell is trying to do the counter. Didn't quite happen. Now she's got a long way back. Can she do it? Malsan got a hold off, but it's a long way to go yet. Power yes, looking. Oh, oh, she got it. Oh. Well, she rolled onto her shoulders there. Powell looks for the Ipon, but it was a Wazari. Ah, if you roll onto your shoulders, Keep it's a Wazari. But great driving over to from Natalie Powell of Powell Great Britain. Wazari each. Bring it in front of you, get in front so of you, that side. Lots of information there from the coaches. Both of them got to go forwards. Maltzan also has a penalty on the board. Powell, look at the counter this oh, time. Oh. That's a Yuko for Powell. Oh, That's what she was looking for at the beginning. Now can she hold up? Powell on top. Wide. Great comeback Man. from Natalie Same Powell. The grip and grip and this is what she was trying Same for on speed. the first attack. The this time she gets a Yuko for it. Look it was right. on the edge. Yoko Garuma, and, and she takes her onto her side there, almost holds her down, but Malsan just manages to get out. Now, Natalie Powell, 30 seconds to go. She's ahead. Can she possibly win her first ever Grand Prix? Oh, oh, another Yuko. Not a stop from Powell. On the edge, starts in, but it goes out, but it doesn't matter. It started in. Beautiful driving old Garuma there from Natalie Powell. Natalie Powell, non-stop oh, attack. Control Brilliant the stuff from her. Two seconds left on the clock and it's all over. Natalie Powell wins her first ever Grand Prix gold medal and that was magnificent. Score after score, beautiful driving Oguchi Gary there. Yoko Garuma for Yuko and then an Oguruma for the second Yuko. Started in went out that didn't make any difference brilliant stuff there from the Brit a real good attacking contest here from both fighters that is what judo's all about I'm really happy I've been waiting for the gold for so long I've consistently been getting bronzes and silver I've got too many of them now so I'm really I'm really happy to get the bronze the gold today in the heaviest female weight of over 78 kilograms Germany finally were able to take gold as Knit saw off Ukraine's Kinzerska in the final However, the talk inside the Shariarka Stadium was all about a domestic showdown for bronze between Isanova and Abdrasilova. After the bout went to golden score, Abdrasilova struck to score Ipon and secure the bronze. But more importantly, she staked her claim as the future flag bearer in the category. From heaviest to lightest, and at 48 kilograms, it was the Mongolian flag flying highest in Astana, as Galbadran came through the pack to take gold. And she did it in style. This flashy transition into a Jujigatami armbar, a fantastic way to score it on, and earn Galbadran a first gold on the IJF World Tour. At under 52 kilograms, the diversity of judo was once again on display, as for the first time ever, an athlete from Mauritius made an appearance in the final. Le Gentil would take on Portugal's Ramos. How would she fare on the big stage? Well, Le Gentil having the tournament of her life. Ramos, very experienced. She's out there to win. 
Ah, she's taken her over. Was that a score? Not quite. Certainly Ramos on top of this. The Gentile, oh, though, oh, doing oh, well. Oh, my goodness oh, me, she's in trouble now. And look at that. Wakigatami and Ramos is, well, she's overcome. She wins the gold medal there. But all credit to Le Gentil, the first ever Mauritius fighter to be in a final at a Grand Prix. And she made a mistake, didn't she? Ramos turns onto the arm, does a reverse turn, and the arm starts to straighten up there, and then the pressure's on. Ramos piles the pressure on, and Le Gentil had to submit. Ramos is overcome with emotion. Le Gentil should be very, very pleased because she has made history. I am really proud of myself. I wasn't expecting to finish in second place. It's an honor for my country and for myself. I've trained really hard and made lots of sacrifices. So there you go. Moving across to the men. At under 66 kilograms, the home nation anticipated gold. Smagalov came out to compete in the final after having shown plenty of promise throughout the day. His opponent there would be Japan's junior world champion, Hashiguchi. But whilst the crowd were hyped at the prospect of gold, it was not to be. Hashiguchi was too good for Smagalov. A dropping shoulder throw earned him a Wazari lead. And within a minute, it was all over, as Hashiguchi added a second Wazari to score a Wazetti upon and end the bout outright. An assured display from the youngster to once again demonstrate just how much talent Japan have in their ranks. A first World Tour gold for Hashiguchi. Disappointment for Smagalov in Kazakhstan. At under 73 kilograms, the man on form was Duprat of France. The Frenchman was on fire in Astana, displaying ruthless groundwork skills with this Juji Katami. And then, lightning fast reflexes to catch Mongolia's veteran Hash Patar with this fantastic Uchimata. Israel's Muki, maintaining a higher attack rate to force numerous penalties on his counterpart and earn him a spot atop the podium. A well-rounded performance from Duprat, which showed a mixture of spectacular judo and tactical nous. Up one weight at under 81 kilograms, it was Kvetsov of Russia who secured the 300 ranking points on offer in Astana. The final was an all-Russian affair, for which this Yuko from Kvetsov would be the deciding factor against compatriot Kalbazeyev. Russian judo once again boasting its depth. The under 90 kilogram final once again had the crowd on the edge of their seats, as home favourite Akhmetsanov came out for the final. But his opponent hadn't read the script. Tajikistan's Astapirian dominated the final, and after scoring a Wazari with a driving shoulder throw, his constant barrage of attacks eventually saw Akhmetsanov disqualified for passivity. A massive moment for judo in Tajikistan. Astapirian, the hero of the hour. The final of the over 100 kilos category would be contested between Hungary's Boar in white and Krakowetsky of Kyrgyzstan in blue. Who would come out on top? Well, Boar's got his grip, big high lapel he's grip, and he's got the sleeve. Oh, he almost gets counted there. Krakowetsky looked for the Kosoto counter, didn't he? Ball just manages to turn onto his front. Tries for the Ogaruma, that's what he wants. Got the right angle for it. Now he's got the grip again. Is he going to go again, Ball, this time making an adjustment? 
He wants the Okaruma. Big arm over the top this time. Grakovetsky all the time looking for the counter. But very experienced. He's been here fighting for medals all ground through Grand Slam tournaments, always there round about. And now the Okaruma, and it gets a score. 39 seconds from the end, and he gets the ick on for it. But Okaruma was what he was searching for. In the end, it comes. Gets the angle, and he gets the rotation. He goes cleanly onto his back. Grakovetsky this time couldn't counter. Barnabor of Hungary finally wins a Grand Prix gold medal. And, well, the smile on his face says it all. The under 100 kilos category has the Siaka Arena simmering with anticipation as national hero Rakov waited backstage to take to the tatami. Rakov is a former world champion who loves to perform in front of a home crowd. When the World Tour first graced Kazakhstan for the Masters, Rakov was there to take gold and ignite the crowd in Almaty. A year later, he was back to win the Grand Prix. And on both occasions, Rakov's pride at hearing his anthem played inside the arena was clear to see. This time, Rakov would be competing in Astana, a trial run ahead of the World Championships next year, where support for him will be monumentous. And the crowd were not to be disappointed as their icon produced one of the throws of the tournament against Russia's Bitiev, route to the final. A sensational standing Sianagi from Rakov as he flew his nation's flag with pride. In the final, he was more measured, dominating the gripping exchanges with his German opponent, Peters, to secure the win on penalties. But it didn't matter to Rakov's fans, who erupted as the gong went to signal his victory. Once again, Rakov was able to hear his anthem played out in his country. Will he be able to repeat the feat next year at the World Championships? And so we come to our final category, the under 60 kilograms, where Kazakhstan had their brightest hope in action. Smetov has just become the Asian Games champion. And last year in Almaty, he too showed just how much he revels in the chance to compete on home soil. His victory then showed just what a skillful technician he is. And this year in Astana, it was business as usual for the lively Kazakh. Smetov has both speed and power on his side. But what sets him apart is his execution, as his elimination opponents found out when they were on the wrong end of a barrage of attacks. He semi-finally threw his Russian opponent two times in a row, before finally securing a pick to put his place in the final. looked unstoppable. Could this be a sign of things to come at the World Championships next year? Standing between Smetov and the gold would be Mongolia's world silver medalist Dash Tavar, who is himself one of the division's danger men, as Smetov's teammate Ebreya found out during the day. While Smetov isn't yet in the league of world number one Takato, he has a year ahead of him to prepare for the World Championships on home soil where home support can make all the difference. Facing off against an opponent like Dash Devar would be great preparation. Vasmetov certainly the best fighter on the power of power in Kazakhstan. And he's so dangerous he can come from every angle. You never know where it's going to come from. Good gymnastic ability as well. I think he's going to be a real threat at the World Championship, certainly being on home ground this time next year. Watch out, Smetov. There's the arm 
Toe there, just trying to stop himself from going over Dashkabar. Mongolians, well, they normally come from every angle. Of course they do. But Smetov ready to counter as well. Uchimata this time. Now look at that, arm round the back. and it was the biggest for an Aggie there. Well, the biggest hip on, and that is what Smetov is all about. Changes direction, changes the flank, and, well, he can throw left, right, counter-attack, traditional, you name it. Beautiful stuff. It was no score. Now he's got it to do all again. Uchi Mata this time, Smetov, Dash the has got to come forward, he's got to attack, looking for that, oh, he was looking for it, big post of the gets counted backwards himself, and Smetov gets a Rosario, the crowd are out their seats again, he went for the hugging post of the didn't quite happen, Smetov counters, rolls him onto his back, gets the Rosario, brilliant change of direction, and look at the drive of that back leg. The Smetov gets a Rosari. Both of them hugging, and Smetov came off the better of the two. And now Smetov ahead. Dashtavar has to come from behind. 31 seconds left. He's got a cross grip there. Now what's going to happen? Oh, he does a cartwheel out, and he lands on top. He's in trouble. Smetov is on top. Can he show Katami? And now he's holding the hip on the crowd. Are going absolutely nuts. Seven seconds on the clock. That doesn't make any difference. Was that it? I was eating hip on. And Smetov wins the gold medal. And the crowd celebrate. Their hero is the winner of the gold medal. And my goodness me. He applauds the crowd because they have been supporting him. It makes a difference to him, and it could make a difference this time next year when the World Championships are on home ground. There was the Barani. Gymnastic ability took him over into the position for the holdout. He drives him back onto his back. He gets the Kami Shihogatami, and he holds him for the Wazari Awazeti Ippon and the gold medal. And with the World Championships on home ground next year, you wouldn't bet against him contesting that world title. And just maybe he'll get to hear the anthem played on the biggest world stage. I'm very happy to win here. It's very important to me. Winning in my hometown and hearing all the people cheering for me is amazing. When you see your flag being raised in the ceremony and your anthem being played, it's an unforgettable experience. This win is very, very important to my team also. I've been preparing a lot for this Grand Prix. It's been tough, but I'm glad that the training has paid off by bringing this great result to Kazakhstan. So, it's time for Judo to say goodbye to Kazakhstan. Gerby bounced back in style. Powell raised her game to the next level. History was made for Judo in the Mauritius. And Gore took a memorable Grand Prix goal. But it was two national heroes who stole the show. Will they be as lucky next year at the World Championships? Join us in one week from Uzbekistan for the Tashkent Grand Prix.